This is just a short message that I wanted to do for all of the fire signs out there, especially Aries, because I know you guys get a lot, a lot of heat all the time for being high energy or like um, having, you know, a lot of intensity to you. And I am sick of this way of looking at Aries. Um, if you're an Aries now, I'm not an Aries. I have an Aries moon though, but I, my son is in Sag, cusp Scorpio, and um, Venus is in Scorpio, so which I've mentioned before. So I just wanted to jump on and just say something that a lot of people probably don't understand is that when it comes to the fire signs, these guys, like myself, we're here to do fire starting. We're here to do the clearing. We're here to do the, the burning. When, you think of, when I think of a fire sign, I think of, you know, obviously Sagittarius. Um, the three fire signs are different embodiments of the projection of fire and projection of passion and high intensity and that's why a lot of these relationships with fire signs, with the Leos, the Sages and the Aries are very intermediate relationships. They come and go because fire consumes and burns things really quick. And if you can't sustain a fire sign, if you can't have something of, of really deep value to um, calm that and quell that fire and sustain that, it will, it will inevitably end. And that's why a lot of these fire sign relationships just come and go, come and go. And I know that they can be very, um, really, really soul destroying to people out there, um, particularly the water signs, because they really, you know, when they meet someone, they so want them to be the one. And then Sagittarius bails or Aries, you know, is probably fucking three or four different people at one time. So... It, it's, it's a real head fuck, particularly if the fire sign hasn't done the self-evaluation and isn't aware. And when I say aware, I mean telling the truth about what your intentions are. So whenever I'm online and I see like on a, on a hookup app or a dating app, whatever it is, I don't, it doesn't matter what it is. If that profile isn't filled out properly, if there are blank stats, this is already deceptive. Right, So when we're being clear about who we are, we're going to be really clear about what we want. So if a man, if you're out there and you're a woman listening to this and a, a man says to you, hey, this is just sex, I don't want anything serious, fucking listen to him. Because what, you, what happens is, and I get this a lot, um, the wom so women don't want to hear that. They want to pursue the man that is not available and try and make themselves the exception. It's not going to happen. So if he's honest enough to say that and he doesn't display that, then he's already telling you what he wants. Anything that we put on someone else that we want from them that they aren't displaying to us through their energy is on us. But if they tell us that they want one thing and go another way, that is on them. That's deception. That's deceptive behavior. That's why I don't engage with profiles that are blank. I don't engage. I will not engage with um, engagement with like any level of um, ambiguousness, any level of indifference. I will block you because where you're trying to drag me is too low vibration. It's not in truth and it's not in alignment. So what I'm saying is, um, be really clear about your intentions. And if they're not clear about their intentions as a fire sign, you will be in trouble with that, with that individual. Okay. Sagittarius doesn't want to be contained. They like to be free and they like the idea that they can just walk away from their job, walk away from their business, walk away from their responsibilities at any moment. So making them feel that they have space and room to move, like the horse inside of them needs to buck 
you know, they've got that bestial side. These guys are really kinky. Then you've got the Aries, which is high, high intensity. It's either going to be a really high intense sub that's subservient and hands over their power and enjoys that dynamic, or it's going to be the Dom that's going to enjoy using others for its own power and pleasure. This is the dynamic that we play out in life between the balance of feminine and masculine energy because masculine energy is action and it's containing, like it's containing so if you're going to be with a fire sign like Aries, you have to be a safe place for them to be contained, okay? So natural, natural instinct and natural chart placements is what you're coming up against. So if you're dating someone new and they are a fire sign, because uh, we know most people have a lot of problems with these signs. Um, so we're just going over to clarify it. Moon, so sun sign is your, you know, where your sun was placed when you were born. Moon, so that's your outer world. The moon is who you really are. Their moon placement is who they really are, the most private, deepest, most personal part of themselves. That's who they really are inside. And the rising, ascending is the lens that they see the world through. That's the angle, that's the sign, the angle that they see the world through. So for example, if you had a double up in your sun and a double up in your rising on the same sign, that's like going to amplify the fuck out of that person. So they wouldn't just be a Sag if it was double Sag. They'd like, yeah, they'd obviously it would be a double Sag if it was. So it's only going to amplify. So whatever placements around those big three are going to amplify each other. <clears throat> okay, so... I hope that makes sense. So air has no form. So if it's a Gemini, if it's Libra, if it's Aquarius, it will only be amplified. If, so an Aquarius sun, uh, Gemini sun, uh, yeah, Libra sun, whatever the moon or rising is, is only going to amplify that. Okay. I know I'm jumping here a little bit, but you know, this is just a quick chat. So back to the point that I wanted to make as well. The, the main thing I wanted to say here is I love passion. If I meet someone and they're always tired, they've got no energy, they need you to lead them, they don't want to really kind of step up, that's not workable for me. And, it's, and it shouldn't be workable for you either because to actually form a relationship that is really going to last you need the other person to bring the same level of passion and intensity for you and the relationship to even get that off the ground. But it's got to be a way where it can be a slow burn, not just a fire that kind of consumes. So um, I have done a Venus series, which I went through all of the signs and how to keep them in a relationship, how to not let them lose interest, how to sustain it. Um, but in terms of looking at the fire signs, I would rather someone be high intensity, high passion, high energy than someone that makes me feel lethargic and makes me feel tired and drains the fuck out of me. Okay. Cause that's not that to me, um, that's not going to be really a relationship based in equality. You know, if the, if they can't receive you mentally, then you're already, you know, in, in serious trouble. So if you can get a fire sign that has depth to them, um, then that's a really, really good thing. So when I say depth, I'm also, I'm also referring to alignment, which I'm going to probably do a video, um, at some point talking about alignment, which means that their energy is in alignment with what they're saying and their energy is in alignment with what they are asking for and the direction they're going in. This has to match up with your alignment and their alignment. So this works positively and negatively on, on all different levels. Like I have mentioned before, humans are not equal. We're all on different levels of playing fields. This is what makes life spicy, right? So there are eagles, birds of prey, and then there are pigeons, which are scavengers that need to survive in group and herd mentality and live off scraps and are little messengers and shit. These are both birds, but they are not the same in the world. And that is the same for humans. So if you're 
growing and evolving and doing the work and leveling up, um, the other person has to also be able to accommodate that level of change and expansion for you, just like you do for them. And if you can get a fire sign like an Aries or a Sag or a Leo that's really committed to leveling up and not just like superficial stuff like acquiring money and stuff, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real leveling up and like looking at the world and taking action in their life and being committed and showing commitment. You've got something really special there Um, because if you're making art or if you're making something, it takes an insane amount of energy to sustain focus and hold your vision to see something through. You know, if you can't define it, what is it? So that, that's where I'm going with this. And what I see is people looking at the fire signs, more Aries and going, it's too much, I can't handle it. Well, my response is, if it's too much then go find less, go find someone who's less. When someone says you're too much, that is a really limiting statement. They're trying to place a cap over the top, a ceiling, if you will, over the top of you. So you've got to come down to where they feel comfortable. This for me is the biggest red flag. When I get that, I will block you, dismiss you, shut you out, ignore you, you're gone, you're dead to me. Never ever tell someone that they're too much, all right? If someone's too much, then fuck off and go find less, all right? And that's just, it really is as simple as that because when we place, when we act small, play small, we create ourselves to be small and contained in a paradigm of what other people want for us to be for them. And that's a real pathway to disappointment, especially if you're a fire sign. So you've got to um, ignite your passion if you're a fire sign, but you've got to see things through. You've got to commit, okay? That's how, that's the real truth is small increments of effort over long periods of time, create the change, create the weight loss, create the building of the saving of the money. Create, it's, it's, it's a commitment over a period of extended time that creates and sustains the change So if you can find a fire sign that can do that, you've got something really special there. But yeah, as for fire signs in general, it's really, it's an intense journey. If you've got a lot of fire in your chart, don't let anyone, anyone shame you for it. Telling a Leo to not be a Leo would depress the Leo. It would depress them. They're not going to want that. They're here because they're loud and proud and bold and beautiful. And that's what they are. Telling a snake to not be a snake is crazy. Telling my dog to be a cat isn't going to work because we can't get someone to act against their nature for a prolonged period of time. So it's always best that, you know, obviously I'm veering off here a little bit, that we show who we really are at the start. That way we're not doing the old, Um, bait and switch, which a lot of Libras can do in relationships where they show you one side and flip the switch in a different way when you're in a relationship with them. A lot of um, Venus placement can do that. But what I'm saying is just if you're passionate about something and they aren't passionate about that and they don't see value in your passion for that movie show um, craft that you're learning, then that's just not a match. And I've learned that it's best to just let things go than hold on to someone that isn't really seeing and valuing your passion because your passion, um, you know, like I hear people talk about things that I'm not necessarily overly passionate about, but when they talk about it, it's their passion for that topic that makes it interesting to me because you can feel that energy. And that's a really important thing. So finding people that have passion is difficult these days because life is hard. The cost of living is hard. Things are getting like crazier. The stakes are getting higher. Things are, you can really feel it ramping the fuck up right now. So a lot of people are drained energetically, spiritually, and you know, just trying to preserve your passion and your dream is very, very difficult these days, more than ever, because we're so spoiled for choice and we're so spoiled for distraction. But fire signs need to be what they are. 
Who the fuck else would they be? It is what they are, all right? So let, let if someone's got lots of energy and passion and they're bouncy and enthusiastic, don't quell that. Don't shut that down. You know, what is it about you that needs to try and shut other people's energies down? Because it's make, is it making you feel that you, that you're, that it's making you look at your lack of self energy is that, or your lack of passion in yourself? Because with the fire signs, it's the passion and the force that pushes things out into the world. And that's what Aries particularly is here to do. Um, if you're an Aries listening, you must have a purpose and a mission. Aries has to have opposition against it for it to grow and um, become stronger. So that's part of what Aries journey is. Coming is, is the baby, uh, Leo is the adolescent and Sagittarius is myself, the old man, the old philosopher type brain. So these are the three embodiments of those archetypes in reverse of the mother, the maiden and the crone. But in relation to an Aries, it's seeing the world with such passion and energy and vigor. And it's like, everything's exciting and wonderful. And that's amazing. Like, I wish I could get that back. <laughs> I wish I could get that back. You know, I want more of that, please. So I'd rather have that than have someone who is tired and wants to lay in bed. We're here for the living of life. So getting out there, getting in the ocean, feeling the current pull you around, going for a hike, getting out in nature and exploring the world. This is the fire of the fire signs. So Aries has to have a journey. Um, Leo has to have a cause and Sagittarius has to have that philosophical expansion through seeing, understanding things at a bird's eye view. Um, so, which is what I think ultimately I, I try to do a lot in my life. It's a lot of reflecting, a lot of deep thinking. When I say deep, um, I don't mean like, my favorite color is blue. Um, <laughs> that's not a deep answer about why you like blue. My favorite color is blue because, uh, the sky is blue and I like the sky. Okay. That's not deep. A deep answer to why you like the color blue would be blue makes me feel a certain way in my body. Blue makes me feel, um, an energy shift. It makes me, it projects an, an emotion and a, and a memory of something that is blue get deep. So if you're not meeting people that aren't prepared to get deep, it's all a complete waste of time. If you're not prepared to show who you really are to someone, it's all a complete waste of time. So we can only attract that of what we are. That's why we find a lot birds of a feather flock together. So lost, confused people find lost, confused people. They just do. Or a lost, confused person will be controlled by a person that projects control over them because they're lost and confused. So we can only attract that of what we are. So the higher that you go in consciousness, a lot of the time, being honest with you, the further away the distance will become between you and other people around you as you're growing and expanding and shifting. And so that, that's very challenging. And it's natural because for them to feel uncomfortable because they've created an established version of you that they've come to know and you're now destroying that as you're leveling up and changing. So I understand that it makes people feel uncomfortable. This is a journey. Life is a journey. Relationships are a journey. It's all evolution. So the version of me that was 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago is completely different to the version that's on this audio recording right now. And the version of me to come in the next three years will be completely different to the version that I am now. It, it's just, it's just life as we're changing and adapting. What I can't stand and what I won't put up with is people that will not or are not committed to growth because the yield of that is really wasting their life away with nonsense. And it's playing it safe. It doesn't, you don't grow. It's the challenges that make us grow. It's the being only in the potential of something being undone is something done. So I hope that made sense. 
Um, if you know a fire sign, fuck, just let them be a fucking fire sign. That's what they do. They get around fucking burning shit and that creates shifts and change and paradigm shifts. All placements have their purpose. I just see a lot of hate on Aries. I see a lot of hate on, on these fire signs. And it, you know, I, to me personally, I'd rather have someone that makes me feel alive that wants to wake me up in the morning and go for a hike and get shit done. Um, that might be a little bit reckless or might be a little bit, you know, um, jumping into action mode, action, action, action. But in this time space reality, we're not here just for the, um, thinking of stuff. We're here for the living and the practice side of stuff. So I'd rather jump in and figure it out a lot of the time. Um, not just wing it like a lot of Sagittarians do leave it to the last minute and then just hope for the best, have a plan, but work the plan um, and work your goals. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this. Leave these fire signs alone. Let them be what they need to be. Everyone has a place at the table. Um, and obviously nothing can hurt you if it isn't true. Otherwise just ignore it. That's what I do. I don't give things or people, um, a fleeting moment of my energy or intention or, um, just my attention because that's what, you know, that's what feeds it. So I don't engage with it. I won't engage with low level energy. I'm just not here for that. It's super boring, um, super boring conversations. I, I can't be fucked with it. All right. So fire, 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 Shakti energy, Kali energy is coming in. And sometimes we need to shake things up and smash things down. Kali energy is the smashing of something down. And then it's the, it's the rebuilding of it later. So it, it's just, I love that. And I think there's a lot of beauty in, there is beauty in destruction. There is beauty in um, resetting yourself. There is beauty in reset and it is painful and it is scary, but that's how shifts happen. You know, you just can't do the same old shit. It just gets super boring. Lots of love, lots of light. And I hope that you've enjoyed this podcast. If you're a fire sign and you can relate to this, or if you can relate to anything I've said in this podcast today, leave a video, leave a, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And I hope you're having a really, really great week. Lots and lots of love, truth and strength to you. Okay. Bye. Bye.